everyone. This is part one of a multi-part video series on the Watson Virtual Agent Solution from IBM. In the first part here, we'll go over getting started with the Watson Virtual Agent Solution and give a quick tour around the interface as well as point out some of the key features you'll need to know as you use the service. Uh, future videos, we'll dive deeper into the actual development with the service. I'm going to have a fictitious company, which I call My Wireless, and we will link it to that, um, their customer service page, and we'll show how to do uh, some, of the, some of the more uh, common coding types of questions of how do I add this to my site, how do I integrate with a back-end service or a system, and then how do I customize this service. So please feel free to subscribe to this channel and you'll receive updates when new parts of this are released. Feel free to write me a note if you'd like to see something explained a little bit further or if you have a question um, about this, anything brought up here in the video today. So to start, Let's go ahead and, and look at the Watson Virtual Agent Solution Service. It's offered um, by IBM in the cloud marketplace. You can simply do a Google search if you want on IBM Watson Virtual Agent. You'll get a page uh, that comes back that looks similar to this. A couple different options. You can view pricing and buy, or you can sign up for a free 30-day trial. You do have to sign up for this um, in order to use it, so go ahead and sign up for the 30-day free trial and, and you know give it a test run. Uh, for yourself and see how easy it is to use. Once you sign up, you will get an email uh, confirming your uh, subscription to the service then. And then you can go ahead and look at your cloud uh, marketplace. You'll see right here I have three different services. Um, it'll show up automatically for you. So you have a couple different options, launch and manage. If you manage, that simply is just managing access to the service itself. So what you want to do is go ahead and launch. Click launch and it's going to bring me uh, to a page where I have a few different options. Um, configure, test, publish. You can see uh, it takes a link right to the documentation if you want to see that. Uh, we'll look at the engagement metrics a little bit later. Right now let's go ahead and configure the service. So this is really neat. You'll see a page and you can filter by a number of different categories here on this page, uh, all the different conversation flows or intents. Um, and you'll see that there's, there's a lot of them and they a lot keep getting added all the time. If you looked at this service, you know, a few months ago, some of these intents weren't on there because they're brand new and they've been added. Um, I get a question, how do I know what's been added or changed with this service? Uh, you can always go uh, into this little bell icon here and it'll give you a notification of, of what they added. See here you can see 11 different intents were added for uh, loyalty programs and, and security and scheduling appointments and those kinds of things. And they usually give you a link to the, um, to the notes about it and some more. So uh, one of the first things we're going to want to do is change the agent name. Um, here I I named uh, my agent uh, Mia from My Wireless. My Wireless, again, fictitious company that I created that we'll, we'll use uh, throughout this video series. And then it comes with a simple greeting. This is actually the default greeting uh, that I use. I just, I just kind of kept it the same, right? So very easy to change it if I wanted to change it, um, you know, and check out kind of uh, what that looks like. So I would go ahead and use the preview window. If I click on preview real quick, I get a nice little, hi, my name is Mia from my wireless. I'm here to answer your questions. What can I help you with? And that's exactly what we saw here, right? So that's, that's where this text is actually coming from. So this is a great way since I don't have a user interface yet um, that I can go ahead and you know test this out, right? So if I wanted to do something like, you know, tell me about your company, right? So I can tell you about the My Wireless company, and you know I get a little bit of uh, a couple sentences here um, on what it is, and it takes me. And it also kind of the nice thing with the preview here, it shows me the actual intent that was fired and that you know that that brought us here. So there's and that's a link. So I click that link, and it takes me to here about us. So this is what actually um, you know the uh, the actual the actual text that was displayed as you can see. Like, easy to change. Let's say I want to change from New York to Chicago. I simply save that 
and let's see, try it again. You can see, oh, now we're in Chicago. So very, very easy, you know, easy to do, right? Uh, one question I get a lot is, how can I use this for, you know, it's very telco focused right now, um, but that's okay. I mean, even if you're, if you were a retail company, say, we saw, you know, one of the things that was added was customer loyalty. So it, it very much might apply to, to retail. You know, there's billing thing, um, uh, things in here where I could change, uh, you know, pay my bill. I can, I can buy things, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's all in here as well. But, and that might apply to, let's say, a retail store or insurance company or something like that. But one thing that may not apply is, let's say, a, a prepaid plan, right? So right now, if I typed in, because I'm a telco company, I typed in prepaid plan, because let's say I want to you know, tell me about a prepaid plan. It says, okay, I can help you with that. But if I'm not a telco company and I want to use this for something else, I simply just turn that off. So now if I actually typed in prepaid plan, I guess something like, you know, I can't, can't help you with that right now. If, um, it, it doesn't know about it, right? You know, you can um, you can go ahead and speak to a human agent um, if you want, but you know, I, I really don't know about it, right? So it's something that something that the the agent no longer knows about. So it's kind of a um, a nice way, you know, to actually to actually uh, use this for something other than telco and what it is right now. Kind of an easy way to customize things. Uh, if I go to off topic, this is actually the none of the above response. So, which we just saw, right? I cannot help you with that right now. If you'd like to speak with a human agent, you know, type agent. And this none of the above is important. You always have to have something in there for that handles any of the requests that kind of don't fit any of the categories that we saw below. And that's exactly what this none of the above, you know, is. And it gives us a lot of options. I mean, this is the default kind of kind of uh, response. Um, other things I can do is I can automatically, let's say all I want to do is transfer to a human agent right away. I can select that as an option um, or I can use my own conversation. So what I would do here is I would uh, create a Watson conversation service in Bluemix, define my own conversation flow, and then I would link it here by going into custom capabilities and I would link my workspace from there into here. And then that would get fired. So I can I can customize this quite a bit, you know, just by just by doing that. And that's not specific to none of the above. That's actually available in, you know, almost almost all of these, right? So I can do that anywhere here. I can transfer to an agent right away on this question, or I can use my own conversation flow if I don't want to use kind of the default for any of these. As well as you know, just turning them off. You know, I can always do that as well. So a lot of customization that I can I can do with this. So one of the last few things we want to take a look at engagement metrics. This is pretty neat. Um, you know, I can I can define the the view into this if it's a week, a day, a month. Um, I can look at how many interactions I've had. It gives me the average duration of the interaction. It gives me the intents you know that are the most common that I have, and I could. I could click and drill down into these further if I wanted to. Uh, it gives me the topics. That's very neat. You know, the most common topics <laughs> that are there, um, as well as some of the, you know, different interactions, uh, escalations. You know, if I wanted to have an escalation to a hu human agent or something like that. It'll show me the users, um, as well as the interactions. Interactions are really neat. Um, the interactions, you know, I get a whole list of all the different interactions that are going on. You know, with this service, and I can see exactly what the what the flow was, and this is the flow that you know we just had right now, right? I can ex export these if I wanted to to Excel or um, you know a comma a separated format. So that is a quick tour of the Watson Virtual Agent solution. Like I said virtual um, in future types of videos, we're going to dive a lot deeper into the actual development with this. Uh, so. You know, stay tuned for those. And right now, um, you know, feel free to contact me again if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching the video, and we'll talk with you later.